Hi everyone, welcome back to Karen Puzzles. So in my last video, I shared the wild story about the estate sale where I got these three puzzles for relatively cheap, but acquiring vintage puzzles is only the first step. The second step is to solve the puzzles to find out if any pieces are missing. So I'm gonna get to these later, but for now I'm going to solve the prismatic puzzle. This is a puzzle that I have wanted for so long. It is so beautiful. I'm so excited. I finally get to solve it. This puzzle was released in 1970. The puzzle itself is an octagon shape, just like the box and the artwork was done by Claudia Carroll. So let's just get started. And then along the way, I'm gonna share more fun facts about where this puzzle came from, um, some stuff about the artist, about the piece cut. But uh, for now, let's start puzzling. So the first thing I'm noticing about these pieces is that um, whoever had this already did it before because you can see there are still large sections put together. So I am definitely going to be taking those apart so I can do the entire thing from the beginning. I actually think I'm gonna dump all of this out and then I can just take them apart as I do the sorting. Look at that, look at all that red puzzle dust in there. All right, I finished the sorting, sort of. <laughs> sorting, sort of, didn't mean to do that. Basically, I decided that up front, I would only divide it into little pieces, and then I already separated these little guys, which are flat on the top and bottom, with all of these, which are not. And then, of course, in the middle, I have the edge pieces. And then over here, I have all of the larger inside pieces, and Usually I would separate these out by piece shape a little more carefully, but I just feel like there is enough going on in this design that I'm not sure if that's totally necessary. And plus, I don't want to rush through this puzzle. Like I wanna spend time with it and really enjoy doing it. So I'm not pulling out every single strategy to do a puzzle as fast as possible. But later on, if I am having trouble, you know, we'll just see. I might do a little more sorting later on as we go. But for now, let's just finally start working on it. Oh man, I just spent 
ages looking for some more edge pieces and I was convinced that they were gonna be missing. And then I looked a little closer. Usually with Springbok puzzles, the pieces are so thick that you don't really have the issue of them fitting where they don't go. But since this is a repeating pattern, you can see that that's really close, but it's not quite right. So this one comes out of there. This one goes there. That's what I had been missing. And then these literally just swap around like that. And then I had found these. So I think that, is that it? Is that the entire edge? And there we go. That is the entire edge. So these were some false edges that I can get out of there now. All right, we are officially not missing any edge pieces. I'm already loving this puzzle. It reminds me so much of the area wear pattern puzzles, which are obviously a newer version than this one. Like this is the original of that type of puzzle. But I just love these bright colors, the repeating patterns, the really graphic type of illustration. So I'm not going to rush through it. I think I'm going to take a little break and get back to it tomorrow. All right, so this is about two hours and 20 minutes of progress. So it's actually going pretty fast. I will admit that the inside without having the edge to work off of has been a little trickier than I thought, but I feel like it's tricky in a good way, not in a frustrating way. I am really loving this puzzle. So my strategy was to just start here in the middle with this solid orange and then all of this blue. I also realized that the angle of these middle angles are a lot, uh, a lot wider than these angles. And I realized that the orange is a lot lighter here in the middle, and then it gradually gets darker and becomes this red around the edge. So this might look a little crazy, but basically what I did was just pull any pieces that I saw with this orange color and then I could just work my way out from the middle. By the end of the morning, I started doing all of these orange corners, and so I feel like the next thing I'll be able to do is just slot these in all around the center. So that is the strategy update, but I also just wanted to share a little more information about this puzzle and where it came from. So as I said at the beginning, this puzzle came out in 1970, um, back when they were still using their original logo. Springbok released a bunch of different octagon shaped puzzles like this. So I'm gonna put a few of my other favorite designs here on screen. Literally just so beautiful and so many of them still look just so incredibly modern, even though they came out 50 years ago. The website that I've talked about on here before, Springbok Fever, um, they have cataloged all of the early Springbok puzzles. So you can go scroll through that if you wanna see all of the different early designs. And on this website, they actually cataloged which puzzle cut 
every different puzzle used. So you can see that for this puzzle, they called the puzzle cut DO508. And we can see that there are actually 508 pieces in this puzzle. Just like all of the Springbok boxes, uh, they just say more than 500 pieces here on the box. We can see that there are actually 37 different Springbok puzzles that all used this exact same puzzle cut. And they even show you how many pieces are in the rings going around each layer of the puzzle. And they show an example showing the center portion of the design. So you can see how mine matches up to the picture that is on the website. All right, I'm gonna get back to the puzzle, but <laughs> I'm just like, if you thought watching somebody do a jigsaw puzzle on YouTube was nerdy, like how nerdy is it to get to fall down the rabbit hole and get obsessed with categorizing the different puzzle cuts that each puzzle within a specific brand 50 years ago was using. Like this is getting so specific now. <laughs> All right, I have a little more information to share about the artist who designed this, but I'm gonna get back to that in a little bit. All right, I'm working on these purple pieces and I have finally figured out how this center part is gonna connect to the edge. You can see right here, um, these two pieces, they actually go right there. So basically this has to turn all the way over here. Wish me luck rotating this thing. <laughs> All right, I did it, and I'm actually really happy. Um, these two don't connect. There's gonna be something else going on in the middle there. So I'm really happy that it only connects right there where I noticed, and then right here, which is another one that doesn't totally lock in. I was worried if it connected in like six different places, I would feel really dumb for not noticing where it went in before. <laughs> All right, I just finished my first complete eighth of this puzzle. So I figured this would be a great time to take another little break and talk a little bit more about the artwork and the artist. So this artwork was done by Claudia Carroll. I looked her up online. I couldn't find a ton of information. So most of what I'm gonna tell you is gonna come from the back of the box. So this artwork is an original painting. It was uh, an oil painting. It was 20 inches by 20 inches. And that is the exact same size as the puzzle. So the original painting was basically just 
this, but on a canvas. And I actually love how this was an original painting because that means there are some imperfections that you wouldn't get if it was done just on a computer like it would be these days. Like you can see right here, these two colors are overlapping a tiny little bit. And then every so often, like right here, you can see a little bit of white between the colors where the paint didn't quite line up with the color next to it. So I just love noticing those little human touches that like I said, you just don't get these days when everything is digital. So Claudia Carroll was born in Paris. Uh, she studied at the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts, the Corcoran School of Art, the Hans Hoffman School, the Art Speaking School of New York, and the Pratt Graphic Art Center. That is a lot of different art schools. Um, she's exhibited all over the country in Europe, South America, and New York. And on eBay, I actually found this flyer from one of her solo shows in New York. Can you just imagine how incredible the fashion must have been at this hip pop art art show in New York in the 60s? Like, I can't even imagine. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a lot of examples of her other artwork online, but here are a couple different paintings and some art in other mediums that I found. Um, just really, really beautiful work. But back to puzzles, she actually also designed some other puzzles for Springbok, or at least licensed the paintings to be made as puzzles. I don't know if they were originally intended to be puzzles or not. So I'll have all of those on screen right now so you can see all of these different examples of her artwork on these puzzles. And as you saw, some of her art showed up on the mini spring box, and I actually saw one of them at the estate sale where I bought this puzzle. The lot that I bought was in this cabinet and then on the shelf above it, the bookshelf, I just saw this mini spring box puzzle and it turns out it was another art, like piece of art by the same artist and I, it would have been so easy to just pick it up and throw it in my bag when no one was looking. I bet the person who bought that lot of all of the books up there like didn't even care, didn't even know what they had. <laughs> but I was a good person. I didn't take it. I left it behind. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the puzzle now. I'm starting to get pretty hopeful that there aren't any pieces missing, although I won't know for sure until I put the last piece in, so let's get back to it. I'm so happy there are officially no missing pieces. This was such a find. I'm like, you guys don't even know. I'm so happy right now that I own this puzzle and it's in such good condition.
mean, once you divide what I paid by three, I basically got each of these puzzles for like 11, $12 each, and you would never get this puzzle for $12 on eBay. So what everyone always wants to know is how long it took me. Um, as I said before, this was not too difficult of a puzzle. It took me five and a half hours and I probably could have done it faster, but I really did just want to take my time and enjoy the puzzle, especially at the end where I basically tried to do it like a clock and just go in order. I can definitely see myself returning to this one over and over again. And you guys know how I'm keeping my spreadsheet of all of the puzzles I'm doing this year and I'm giving them a rating. Well, this one is, of course, this one's getting the full five out of five stars. I think it's like the seventh puzzle that I've given it to this year. And oh my gosh, a thought that occurred to me while I was working on this was, I was just thinking about the woman who owned this, who owned the house that the estate sale was at. I don't know if she passed away. I don't know if she was just downsizing and moving somewhere else, but clearly she loved puzzles. So I can just see her like watching this video and being like, of course there are no missing pieces. I loved puzzles. I kept my puzzles in such good shape. <laughs> of course I didn't lose any pieces. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure the other thing that you're all wondering about is what I'm gonna do with these two puzzles. The butterflies one, I think I'm gonna solve in a series of YouTube shorts. So stay tuned for those to find out if any pieces are missing from this one. And then this Zodiac one, I actually am gonna solve for an exclusive video over on Patreon. So you can sign up to Patreon for $3 a month and then you'll get access to my entire library of exclusive videos. And at the time that you're watching this video, you can head over there and the video where I solve this puzzle will already be up. So let me know in a comment, um, what do you think of this puzzle? Is it one that you would wanna try? Your code word for the comments, if you watched all the way to the end, will be octagon. And I think that's it for today. So happy puzzling. And I will see you all in the next one.